Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We finally have our news, guys. EA just dropped the FC25 Ultimate Team launch update pitch notes that we were eagerly awaiting. And guys, EA kind of cooked. We got to look through all that. Changes to Foot Champs has got everybody excited and stealing the headlines. But there's a lot of other changes that are bringing the hype for FC25. And also a couple things that are leaving us questioning. We've got market things to talk about. They're going to show us the player price on the card. We've got rewards changes everywhere, even some matchmaking changes to discuss. And of course, more info on those evolutions to discuss today, guys. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. I'm not going to read this thing paragraph by paragraph because obviously there's a lot of words in here. But if you want to read it a little bit more in depth, I will drop it in the description below in this video. I'm also wanting to bring up a lot of the questions that we were having as we read through this on stream. And as a lot of you guys in the comments we're asking during the stream, I want to have some of that conversation as well, not just read this verbatim. We were going to have a conversation, like analyze this thing today and talk about how it's going to impact the early game of FC25. Let's start there. Early access. We have a delayed web app, guys. By one day, the web app is going to be launching on September 19th, a Thursday. It's actually going to be the shortest web app period ever. Like, there's really not even much of a reason to do much on the web app because it used to be you'd have four or five days. Last year, we had two days on the web app. This year, we have one. You get on the web app the 19th, and it's not even a full day because just hours later, depending on where you live, you'll be able to get on for the 20th of September with the ultimate edition release happening at midnight. And actually, this is a really crazy stat. If you are um, flying or what they say, changing your location to New Zealand on Xbox or PlayStation, if that works uh, for you, you will actually be able to get on the ultimate edition of FC 25 in New Zealand time zone before people can even get on the web app. Yes, that is the earliest to get on the game is if you're able to do that. Um, I don't know if it works on PlayStation. A lot of people talk about it on Xbox, but that is something that will actually happen this year because midnight into the 20th in New Zealand will actually be like, what is it, five hours before 6 p.m. UK when people will be probably getting on the web app. So we'll still be looking for maybe a soft launch on the web app on the 18th and 19th, but I don't think there's that much of possibility with that pretty crazy though how the times work out just how massive the world is that that even is a thing um, but the biggest news with the early access and the ultimate team release is returning user rewards guys we're getting welcome backpacks and returning user rewards are the words that ea used to use in previous fifas for what we know as welcome backpacks so that gives me pretty high confidence that this just isn't tifos kits cosmetic stuff i think it's the real deal i think it's actually some player packs now Excuse me. These could be untradeable. We're used to them being tradable. I could see them being different this year. We'll have to see. I wouldn't expect it to be a lot of packs as well, but the fact that we're getting something is really, really nice for that small amount of time on the web app that we will have. We'll actually have an opportunity to do something, either do some SBCs or maybe start to trade a little bit as well. Of course, just a reminder, early access is the 20th at midnight and the worldwide launch for the standard edition is the 27th at midnight as well. Now, during this early access week of the ultimate edition access starting this Friday, we're not going to have a promo. That's kind of different from last year, right? Where we had the Nike Mad Ready promo. This year, we've got team of the week and a lot of objective based content. The Rush Objectives, World Tour, and Squad Foundations. They also mentioned Evolutions and Player of the Month SBCs, which is really confusing because everything else was pointing towards, even EA themselves said on the website, that at least for Premier League and Serie A POTM, there was not going to be an SBC in game. So, big question marks there. We'll see if we get any content and what it's like. Now, talking more about early access, the Season 1 called Total Rush is what EA spent a lot of length in this article really talking about i want to summarize it for us guys because there's a lot of explanation in here about why they're doing the season changes the way that they are and in general to summarize it all up they're saying instead of the seasons being just an ultimate team clubs and manager career it's a combined season pass for all the modes because a lot of people felt like they couldn't play clubs or manager career without losing out on ultimate team progress so ea's like hey let's just combine it all notice this sp logo here guys SP is replacing XP. Like we'd always get XP to get a level 35 to get that Dino in this last season of FC24. It's going to be SP this year. Now, this is a W and an L, I think, at the same time. I like what they're trying to do here so that you can play in other modes and still get some progress. 
The thing that I could see being problematic is, what if I don't want to play career mode? What if I don't want to play clubs? Or even what if you don't want to play ultimate team? Are you going to be forced to play those modes to get XP or SP to finish the season and to get all the packs? That's where I feel like there could be some problems with this. We'll have to see. But these screenshots right here look like they're objectives inside of clubs and inside of player career. I, ne I don't necessarily want to go spend time playing player career if that's the whole point of this is to keep people playing the modes they want to play and still getting progress. I don't want to have to go into other modes to catch up on SP if I'm behind from Ultimate Team. So that is one thing that I wanted to mention in this video because that's a question that I had um, in this early stage time frame talking about all these objectives. So we'll see how that actually plays out. And the rewards look, I don't know, interesting. They said that a lot of the ultimate team rewards will be later on in the season. The manager career and the club's rewards will be very early on in the levels. Like level maybe 5 to 10 is more so related to that stuff. And then after that, it's more so related to ultimate team. I think this is actually some of the rewards that are going to be in season 1 when we get on the game. Because it said, let's discuss some of these new rewards in FC season as we look at season 1. I think these are actually the season 1 rewards. Level 21 to all the way through 25, you get an 83.5 at level 25, which is, it's okay. Level 24 is an 84.5. These are all ultimate team rewards. So we're just going to have to see how this works out when we log into the game, see what it looks like. But again, my question with all this is, Where's the paid season pass? Where's the conversation about that? EA have said nothing. We've had a leaks. It was in the beta, but we have said, have seen nothing and heard nothing from EA related to a paid season pass. So is that an idea that they're scrapping ahead of the ultimate team release, full game release? We're going to have to see guys. That's something that they've been very quiet about. That's one of the biggest things that I still have questions about. I don't know because they didn't mention it so we will have to see now this last part here is going to be some of the content that is in this early access period and at the start of ultimate team so total rush is a objective car design and an subjective like promo but it's also going to have its actual promo of cards in packs as well october 11th these types of cards this car design total rush players will be in packs and i think it's going to be a promo that you're supposed to go and use them in rush and during the season one this is going to be kind of like a objective group of players that we're going to be chasing all mls players uh with muriel probably being one of the best of those it'll kind of be like squad foundation but we're still having squad foundations and those are a little bit different now also they said inside of here that there's a new concept inside of objectives this year called world tour and it looks like this is going to span across the whole entire year it just looks like more objective based card obtainable content like this adama treore it's going to be starting with spain at the beginning of FC 25. That actually could be a good reason to invest in some Spanish cards. There's gonna be a one nation live friendly for your Spanish squad. And then also keep an eye out for weekly objective themed content with La Liga, Liga F and Spanish players. And they're going to give us squad foundations as well of special evolutions and SBCs. So that's going to be something to think about through this first season. It's going to be Spanish, La Liga, Liga F. Could impact the market a bit, something to kind of remember. Also, for squad foundation players, which we, of course, remember during the early game last year, some nice cards. Those are going to provide plus two league chemistry points. That is pretty nice. A little bit of a chemistry boost straight off the bat. Again, those are not these cards. These are not squad foundations. These are total rush cards. Squad foundations will be different, but they are pretty similar to how it looks. So a lot of player objectives and players available in that side of the game. But this is where it gets good, guys. This is where it re gets really good with the mode and reward changes, specifically with foot champs. This is actually a really good read right here. Uh, this stuff at the beginning before it starts talking about foot champs because it kind of explains where EA is going with why they made some of the changes in the modes that they did. And foot champs is all about high stakes competitive matchups. And we got to start by talking about playoffs because, of course, getting into champs finals, the pinnacle of ultimate team competitive gameplay, or at least that's how it was initially brought into the game to be. It is changing how you get into foot champs. It feels kind of like the daily knockout. I'm not going to lie. Just because of the number of games, how many you have to win, and it's pretty common you're going to have to redo it if you can't get your games done right away. Last year in FC24, it was four wins out of 10 games, which I think a lot of us found wasn't easy necessarily all the time, but it was just doable and it didn't feel competitive that much, right? Well, now it's going to be three wins 
three out of five wins to get into champs finals. They said reducing the number of games will make playoffs feel much more competitive and with more on the line, helping in two key ways. They're saying for higher skill level players, it'll make it easier to qualify for finals instead of having to play 10 games, which we would just get four wins and then gift out wins anyway. At least that's what I would do to get it done, but it'll still make it faster because you only need three wins and you're playing at most five games. And then for lower skill players, they're basically saying if you're not good enough to play finals, then you got to get good. Um, <laughs> to be honest, only playing champs finals once you're ready to be competitive. And we're going to talk about this as we keep moving through here, but it almost does feel like EA's kind of a little rough on those who are not the most skillful at the game. Maybe it's they're, they're early in the game. They haven't been playing for a long time. I'm not the best at gameplay 100%. I'm going to struggle with champs playoffs this year. It sounds like 100%. There's a couple other things that like seem that way. So EA must not be worried about that. But with some of these changes, it's very, very interesting. So with this being harder to qualify, though, they've given us 18 attempts. So if there's five weekend leagues in a month, five weeks on some months, there'll be four. You basically have three attempts each week to qualify for Foot Champs finals with the lesser number of games. It's still going to be possible to qualify for Foot Champs finals for sure. And there's going to be times where we're going to have to qualify multiple times because just imagine you get a rage quit or, or a disconnect. That's going to count for a loss, maybe. That's going to be very frustrating, and it's going to matter more in these games. So disconnects this year are going to be way more rage-inducing in playoffs and in finals for sure. Now, my only question with this is, how are we going to requalify for champs playoffs if we lose? Like, remember in FC24 where we had to get a certain number of those points? What was it, like 1,000 or 1,250 qualification points from rivals to get into champs playoffs? They said in this line here that they're going to make the first time playoff qualification more challenging. So is it going to require points? Is it going to require us to be in a certain division? That's a big question that I have. But once you see the rewards, holy, we are going to want to play champs finals this year, guys. This is where everybody was surprised yesterday, myself included, because I don't think foot champs has felt as competitive as it has in previous years. We even said this last year during FC24 that it felt like rivals was more competitive in terms of the rewards. It was more worth playing rivals than it was playing foot champs. And it felt way too casual for being foot champs and what it used to be. That's changing. EA has made finals now the pinnacle of high stakes competition. It is only 15 games in foot champs finals now, guys. So instead of 30 games with playoffs, and finals you now have 20 games in total with five in playoffs and 15 in finals and if you're able to go 15 and 0 in weekend league rewards for the first season these are your rewards every single week i thought these were season rewards when i first read this guys this is crazy 200,000 coins a tradable 84 and 85 times 10 an untradable base icon an untradable 89 times 2 in the first couple weekend leagues, like that's insane. An untradable 82 times 30, holy fodder. And then three tradable team of the week times three players pack. Like, so three team of the week players. That's crazy. These are unbelievable rewards. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this. And it seems, honestly, when I first saw this, my thought was, that's too good. That's really way too good. What is EA going to do to this market this year? And there's going to be a lot of market impact on this. But what this is honestly going to do is once we get some coins inside of this game, we are going to be able to cook. It is going to be so amazing to trade with cards that people want for weekend league teams, especially in the top tier, most meta echelon of the game. Making coins with weekend league rewards. Weekend league rewards investing might be back, guys. It has been since FIFA 19, FIFA 20, since weekend league rewards investing has worked every single week like clockwork. We might be back. And that would be so amazing if it was. Because weekend league rewards haven't felt like this elite. Like this makes me want to get better at the game and try to get higher ranks to get insane rewards because back in FIFA 17, that's how foot champs felt when it was first introduced into the game. And when I was looking at this yesterday, that's what it brought me back to a foot champs that means something. And this is going to mean a lot. Now we do have also leaked the other rewards inside of here for like rank one. We have rank two, which is 110,000 coins, uh, two 84 tens tradable, a base hero, a couple 88 plus packs. Um, and then you get two, uh, 
Team of the Week tradable packs as well. Rank 3, uh, which for these ranks, we'll look at the different sectors here in a second. But rank 3 is 80,000 coins. You do get an 83 times 10 tradable. That's 11 wins. Um, rank 4, 10 wins is 60,000 coins and 8310, a base hero. Some Team of the Week uh, tradable packs. Like, it's crazy, man. Okay, now, here's the thing. This is where it gets down to where most of us are going to be at, right? So, like, down here at rank 5, this is actually, rank 5 is not as easy as rank 5 last year. Rank 5 is 9 wins. So, that means you're going 9 and 6. That's almost like rank 3 last year in terms of the win percentage. You're going to be able to get yourself here a Hero Max 87, 8210 tradable, 45k, Team League tradable, 8115, and an 81 times 7. So the rewards don't look as insane as you kind of go down the list. This is uh, rank 6, which is 30k, and 8210, 81 um, times 15 again, and then an 86 times 1 times 2. A little bit un hard to understand some of that, but the upper tier is definitely getting rewarded. Like, honestly, it feels like we're looking at a reward structure now that rewards the best players that are going to be the best in this game. And yes, it's going to make it as sweaty as ever. And it's going to be really tough to get a really good rank in Weekend League. But wow, this is really, really insane for me. Yay. This is the biggest W. Like rewards that actually make it feel worth playing. And rewards that honestly seem too good to be true. Now, like we mentioned, it's going to impact the market a lot. We're going to break that down and watch it happen. And stay in front of it and make a lot of coins off it. It's going to be great in that regard. But it's going to be the pinnacle of gameplay demand. Like they're saying here. Uh, on the weekends with champs finals so that's the biggest w out of everything because these rewards honestly just seem too insane i know that i'm never getting rank one personally but i know that if i could maybe level up to a rank three and get 11 wins that'd be really hard but like the rewards would be worth it on an every week basis really really crazy so weekend's gonna have a ton of demand this year for sure especially for the top tier meta now after weekend league we talk about division rivals and this is where it kind of goes sour because this is where ea says your everyday destination for online competitive play your everyday destination they're taking every day to the extreme here instead of having to win seven matches to get your reward upgrade we have to win 15 matches to get reward upgraded in fc25 so instead of three wins for the regular it's five yeah, 15 is a lot, and that's what everybody's looking at with this. Now, of course, with the new system with points, it's not just 15 wins. It's 45 points, so you get one point for a draw, so draws and rivals are no longer useless. You do get three points for a win, um, and there are you do get a points for if somebody like disconnects 0-0 zero, zero, rage quit, you will get a point for that because it is a draw if you're not the one that's rage quitting. So that's a W as well, draws, points um, for rage quits and rivals when it's zero zero so that is nice uh but you look here and see elite division if you win 15 games in the elite division you got seventy five thousand coins a couple 85 plus player picks and some gold players packs tradable and untradable some team of the weeks and then another mega pack as well so maybe you're making 150 125 thousand coins from these rewards 15 games in the elite division is a lot of gameplay a lot of gameplay because you're probably playing more games in 15 right to get 15 wins that's a lot of freaking games, man. So for me, Division Rivals this year is really taking a downturn, and it's not as hype. I think I'm not going to be playing as much Rivals, to be honest, um, especially with the new Rush game mode. If there's good packs and objectives, this might be something where you play Rivals a little bit to just keep those competitive juices flowing, but maybe you just get five wins. Maybe you just get five wins, you know, that sort of thing. So I think there's going to be a lot less um, stress on Rivals this year, even though they're probably going to be updating their the rewards throughout the year it just um i don't know it's just kind of pain that they are expecting us to play that many games now they say here that they're like it's hard to say how many games it should be yeah it's tricky to get the balance right as we think the right number of matches for weekly rewards as you can imagine there's a vastly different number of matches played in the elite division versus division eight true i get that i still think 15 is way too much but I get it. This feels like it might be more like seasons or divisions back in the older FIFAs and less like the rivals that we've known in the previous years. Now let's move on to squad battles because this is a W change as well. To get squad battles and to get better rewards, instead of having to play 32 games a week, you now only have to play 14. The biggest question with squad battle rewards is, are they making the rewards better? 
or are they making them worse? Because we're playing less games, but the rewards in every other game mode, Rivals, they got better, to be honest. Like, if you look at the Rivals rewards last year to this year, first week, or first set right there from that rank one, they're definitely better. Foot Champs rewards, out of the park better. The squad battles, less games, but... Are the rewards getting better too? That's a question that I have that we have not seen yet. So we'll have to see about that. Um, they said as well that you can still get evolution uh, and objective progress after those 14 matches are played, which is a W. Now, live friendlies, I think, is another sneaky W from this because no longer are live friendlies going to be based on your rival's division, which is nice. They're going to be re uh, related to form. And EA added something really nice in here that is going to help friendlies a lot. To reduce the potential for win form manipulation, only full match losses will count towards the way form is calculated. So this basically means if you quit out of games to try to get a lower ELO in friendlies, that will not work because those games will end before the full-time whistle. So a lot of people are like, I'm just going to rubber band, get the loss, let my opponent get the win so that I can go down. Sure, if you really want to do that, get an objective done and lose, like, and make your elo go down, sure. Waste the time, do that, let the other guy have the win. I will gladly be on the win side of that anytime. But uh, that is nice that EA have added that in for the form section. It feels like friendlies are going to be, like they said here, shared playground for squad experimentation and also completing objectives because they did mention in here that for objectives, the friendlies are going to be used a lot more this year. Same thing for evolutions. It's going to be used a lot more instead of rivals and foot champs as it was before. So those are all the new um, changes to the gameplay modes and rewards. Again, it feels like though, if you're not skilled at the game, EA is kind of making it harder for you to get good rewards. Maybe you grinded squad battles offline and that was your way to play and learn the game and get better before jumping into online, which is something we do at the start of the game anyway. Now it's less games, which means it shouldn't be as hard to get better rewards little bit of an issue there. I don't know. We'll have to see. Down in the comments, let me know how you feel about this. I know some people are like, I don't want to play this game because it's moving way more competitive. We'll just have to see. We have Rush as well, which has not been talked about as much in these pitch notes, but that's supposed to be like a free to play, fun to play. Like fun is the whole part of Rush, right? While still getting progress towards objectives. So that's kind of the whole system with the rewards. Last couple things in this, because that was like 90% of this uh, article here. Evolutions. We know there's a new evolution system. They said there's going to be way more evolutions this year. And I think they helped clarify how the new system is going to work. But still at the same time, we have some questions and we're a little confused because guys now no longer does it, the requirements matter. Like the requirements don't matter as much as what the maximum rating is which is different than a requirement. It's like cards now will have a maximum rating that they can be upgraded to, but if they're already at that max rating before going into the evolution, they can still fit in the Evo. That's the best part. But if you're over the maximum rating for that evolution that could be boosted up to, it looks like you do not fit in that evolution. So that's really, really interesting. There's now partial upgrades as well. As you see, somebody who had 85 pace gets upgraded to 90, but somebody who has 92 would get upgraded to 92. This is going to create a lot of craziness with evolution. It's going to be so hard to track the players and the evos i think it's going to be very very necessary to use uh footbin and some of these like saved evolutions my evolutions tab in here to keep track of some of the evos that we're doing because there's going to be a lot of craziness with this they said that this is going to take the pressure off of finding the right player item uh, with a greater range of players able to maximize with each evolution release which will lead to a broader range of evolutions seen in game which is cool we like that more content more opportunities to upgrade the players that we want we even have some leaks already for the first couple of evos that might be coming out we've seen a couple of them already but these are new ones new cosmetic unique gold plus evolution so that's like a car design with like some outline on a gold card and some shimmer seems very basic maybe that's an intro into the new card designs for evolutions but we also have a center back evo that has been leaked kind of reminds me of that center back evo at the beginning of fc24 where my tip was super op kind of reminds me of that one right there um it max pace is 78 for the limit upgrade so that means that you wouldn't be able to upgrade a center back above 78 pace like Interesting. There was an Evo like that at the beginning of last year, FC24 as well. So the new system is going to be a little bit hard to understand, but there are a couple of leaks there. Wanted to point those out um, as well as, was there another one? No, we still have the intro to stat limits thing here that's happening too. So yeah, Evos, we're still going to have to figure out how it's going to work. 
in some of the small minute detail situations of course they um, talked about the icons and the heroes this is the last big thing to discuss guys they are now going to show average market price on cards in the game and i've got a lot of thoughts on this this is something that i like i'm a big fan of this because it allows you let's say you pack a player and you're like yo how much does he cost you can just flick the right stick onto this page of the card and see the price right there now i have a lot of questions how is this calculated can we can people on the market manipulate it by listing a lot of players at max price this will help lazy selling i think griezmann shows an average price of 150 that's not his minimum price. That's his average. So sites like Footbin are still going to be very, very necessary for us to know the lowest price for the card. But it could help. Like if people see, oh, this Griezmann's a 150,000 coin card, but you go on Footbin and he's actually 130K, it might be a lazy selling method this year to buy for whatever the lowest price is, list at the average price or just below that and cop lazy sales as those cards come in as they're expiring because lazy selling is a very popular way to make coins all year round. I think this is going to be a help to that, to be honest. But I also just think it's pretty cool to see the average player price on a card, especially after you pack it. Like, that's just kind of cool. Or if you're looking to upgrade something for your team, you have a ballpark, like, idea of where they're at. Then you can maybe double check on Footbin to see that the lowest price isn't crazy, crazy below that. That's going to be a really interesting thing to watch this year. Seriously, I'm really going to be in tune with that. We're going to be watching it very closely. The rest of this is just kind of smaller uh, info. There is going to be a Roll Plus Plus evolution for those that log into FC25 um, before November and that played FC24 before September 27th. So there is that there. The Euro rewards are going to be dropped on October 10th. That was expected. But honestly, guys, the biggest news was, well, for me, that transfer market thing is pretty cool. The biggest news from this is 100% the rewards and guys we haven't seen a rewards restructuring like this in a long time like they're going to be re refreshing rewards more this year as well that was one of the things they mentioned with rivals is that instead of having to worry about 33 different reward changes they were going to have to make because of all the 11 different divisions from div 10 to the elite division uh they're saying they're going to be able to increase the, the, the number of rivals rewards refreshes which means make them more exciting by changing up tradable and tradable maybe adding promo cards in at some point during the year um, and there's only one option for rivals rewards too even though we're like not talking about playing rivals there's only one option for rivals rewards now um, not just tradable untradable and a mixed version it's just you get everybody gets the same thing so that's one thing that they're a little excited about which i think is cool too i hope there's going to be some variety in the foot champs rewards as well but these rewards like oh my goodness it's crazy it's going to cause a lot of market inflation we're going to be watching this very carefully there's going to be so much hype this changes even the early game market a little bit there's going to be so much hype that first weekend league anybody who thinks that they're going to get somewhere between like nine and, and 11 wins is going to be aiming for that 13 and that first weekend league is going to be so crazy everybody's going to want the best squads that they can possibly get so i'm done yapping this pitch notes is down below in the description if you want to read through it some more let me know your thoughts down in the comments guys i really want to hear from you there was a lot of excitement from this yesterday also some cautious questioning want to hear what you guys thought about this and what you're feeling heading into fc25 after learning about a lot of this content and rewards update information if you enjoyed the video today drop a thumbs up on it and of course subscribe if you're new the countdown is on guys we are two days away from thursday the 19th yeah two days away i'm so excited guys i can't wait to get on this game drop down in the, the description as well and click the link to the stream we'll be live today discussing more of this stuff and prepping for the start of fc25 if you enjoyed it again drop a thumbs up and i will see you guys in the stream today it's been nathan for the count and catch you there peace out